the American Revolutionary War and eventual Constitution seem like a sequence of neat, well-planned events, in reality the Constitution was the product of many years of effort on the part of an incalculable number of individuals. Today we will study a sampling of these events and people by taking a look at a timeline spanning the course of 171 years. In 1620, the male pilgrims wrote and signed the Mayflower Compact. It was the first document of its kind because it was created by the people and gave them a direct say in their government, introducing the revolutionary idea that people could govern themselves. Fast forward, it wasn't until 100 years later that each of the 13 colonies had been settled. By 1760, the East Coast was embroiled in the French and Indian War, a fight for interior territory between the British and the French. The French and their Native American allies fought for seven years before the British claimed victory, giving the conflict its other name, the Seven Years' War. Not long after peace was reached in the French and Indian War, the Crown issued the Proclamation of 1763, making the Appalachian Mountains the boundary line for colonial settlement. The resources of the colonial government were already overstretched, and this measure was an effort to stop westward expansion. However, many colonists already lived beyond the Appalachian Mountains' western boundary, and this was one of the many British policies that went ignored. An effort to raise funds from the colonies to pay for the British soldiers stationed there, in 1764 the British monarchy and parliament handed down the Sugar Act, which imposed taxes on sugar, wine, and coffee followed the next year by the Stamp Act, which required colonists to pay a tax and buy a stamp for newspapers, legal documents, business agreements, playing cards, and dice. This act triggered the creation of the Sons of Liberty, a secret society united against unfair policies of the British government. In response to massive public protests, in 1766 the Stamp Act was repealed and the Sugar Act was reformed, but conflict between the British government and the colonists was just getting started. The next year, the Townsend Acts were handed down, placing taxes on goods shipped into the colonies. Before imported goods could be unloaded from ships, taxes had to be paid at the port. In response, many colonists began boycotting tea. By 1770, tensions between British officials and the colonists had escalated to the point of no return, resulting in the Boston Massacre, a dispute between protesting colonists and British troops on the steps of the Custom House in Boston ended with five colonists dead. Over the next few years, committees of correspondence were set up in various colonies as a means of communication for colonists opposed to British policies. These committees kept citizens organized and aware of how their colony was boycotting British policies. The colonists' protests over British policies culminated in 1773 with the passage of the Tea Act. The Tea Act didn't actually impose new taxes, but it gave the financially struggling British East India Company a monopoly over tea imports to the colonies. The Sons of Liberty responded by staging the Boston Tea Party, in which they boarded British merchant ships and tossed over 92,000 pounds of tea into Boston Harbor. The very next year, in 1774, the Intolerable Acts were passed. Also known as the Coercive Acts, this series of laws were meant to punish the colonists for the Boston Tea Party. The Intolerable Acts were the final straw for the colonists, who sent representatives to the First Continental Congress to discuss what to do about their quickly deteriorating relationship with Great Britain. In 1775, the shot heard round the world was fired at Lexington, and the Revolutionary War officially began. A few weeks later, the Second Continental Congress convened to organize an army and a navy, and they select George Washington as their commander-in-chief of the military. At this same time, work was begun on the Articles of the Confederation, which would serve as the first constitution of the young country. In 1776, Thomas Paine's best-selling pamphlet, Common Sense, was published. The document was written in the everyday English commoners could understand, and made the ideas of independence and self-governance popular amongst the people. A few months later, Thomas Jefferson and a few others penned the Declaration of Independence, making the colonies independent of Britain and giving them a new name, the United States of America. By 1781, the fighting portion of the Revolutionary War was over, when the British lost a key battle, the siege at Yorktown. Not long after, the Articles of Confederation were finally ratified by all 13 states, six years after they were proposed. 
In the years after the Revolution, the individual states were suffering financially and in terms of keeping order. In 1787, the Articles of Confederation had all but failed to unite the states, and the Constitutional Convention was called to amend them and make them stronger. However, once convened, the Founding Fathers decided to start over from scratch, and several months of hard work on our second and current Constitution began. For the next two years, the Federalists and Anti-Federalists debated over the power of the central government and the rights of the individuals. By 1788, 11 of the 13 states voted in favor of the Constitution and it was signed, making it the supreme law of the land. Our current system of government had gone into effect and has remained in place to this day. The very next year, our first President of the United States, George Washington, was inaugurated into office. And finally, in 1791, the Bill of Rights was completed by James Madison and was formally added to the Constitution guaranteeing American citizens basic protections and freedoms from the government that many had worked so hard and long to create.